Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I show you quickly how we can use architecture and a little bit of photoshopping and create two scale materials for this architectural space. We will use the architectures extension that runs right inside SketchUp to create and adjust materials. Plus we will also take a look into the web version, which is pretty much the same, and then create, for example, as you can see here, a custom wood floor texture to fill the whole floor. Okay, and with all that said, let's do it. Before we continue, as a tip, I would go to Window Model Info and switch it to decimal inches. The main reason for using a single unit in decimal is when you work in Photoshop, texture programs, architectures.org, they like single units. You work in inches, pixels, and for example, architectures works in inches, so perfect. When we have the model set just to decimal inches, we can also very easily create readouts, 290 by 230 inches, for example. Then let's go to extension warehouse. Go to architectures for SketchUp, install, and then you will have it here. And I also have this here. Very good. Let's click on it. Architectures is very good for very quickly selecting a material. And with the pro version, which is kind of like $6 per month, I think you can even upload your own material. That's not necessarily that amazing and it has a pretty good category of existing materials already but what is really great about the service is the pattern tool take a look at this oak stretcher oak herringbone oak stack the same material just in variations or with the brick here so or the granite it's just an image and then the way how we tile it can generate various looks or the this um the tile stacks etc or the vertical wooden planks no? so let's go with something easy we have here for example the mono terrazzo when you go to edit now uh, here we have the material we are selecting Currently the pattern is set to none. So it's just the original image as a sample. And it is set up that it's a nice tileable, seamless tileable material. Well, what does this mean? Let's click import. There is the material. Let's close this. I will adjust the material here quickly to the group. While in real life for real work, you want to add this to the face or all the faces in each group. I'm just taking a shortcut here. And there you can see now the material. It looks pretty good, no? We can go to edit here too. And for example, adjust the scale 20. And for people who are new, you might not see it. For those who are familiar with it, we have a tiling issue. So the texture is seamless. We don't see any hard edges, but you can see specifically from a distance a repetitive tiling pattern. And what you see here is just a common technological shortcoming. If I would like to make, or if I want to texture this slab for this kitchen island, I need to have a photo of a granite capturing exactly also the same dimension. Otherwise, I have to scale something up or start tiling. And then we tile, we get kind of like this tiny issue. If we go with 10, it's even more noticeable. So the trick here is if you don't have a sample that is big enough, using a scale that makes it believable. And then also when we put objects on top, we can start hiding these, uh, yeah, this, these tiling artifacts. So don't get too discouraged by it. Good. Now, so like a quick checkup is all pretty good. And then for the, the actual work you saw, I undid all the group materials. Then here I quickly just go to the group, select all the meshes and put that material in. That was pretty easy. Cool. 
let's say here we would like to do a backsplash. See how I'm drawing here um, the geometry and then I'm drawing this along the window frame. There. And there, and there. And then we can push this out a little bit. So ideally the thickness I pulled out should really also be the thickness of the tile. This is really important in believable um, interior design texturing or, archi or also architectural texturing. If it's just an image without material thickness, like the tiles, it it's not believable because nobody puts the tile into the drywall. So this I quickly make group. The nice thing is uh, when I go into edit mode, I can select, for example, this top face and just push this up and down and play with this a little bit later. So uh, let's go to architecture again. And we can, for example, go to tiles and see what type of material uh, we have here. Uh, the, the options here, metro tile, maybe let's see how this one works can just import it. And then I put this onto the front face only. Now, obviously way too big. So let's scale this one down till this is believable. Now this is probably too small, something like this. Very good. Now we can say maybe. So we are running into a few problems here. This looks very amateurish. Why? Uh, no um, craftsperson is going to cut these tiny tiles and then glue them down. So what we have to do in edit mode, right click, texture position. You see now this is where the center is for the tiling. So I have to move this down till now there you can see this. It start lining up kind of there. Okay, so this corner is good. Um, here, I mean, these things can can just be, well, we have to do it. Ideally, you plan out materials and distances so we don't have to do crazy cuts. But for example, this top part, that in my case here, I can bring down till there. Ta -da. Very good. Now, now this looks already a lot more believable. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look at the wooden floor. Let's go to here again. And here I will go to the oak stretcher. You can go import or I will go to edit too. Because here I can show you now what happens when you switch these elements around. It's pretty cool what you can do. Uh, here, for example, there these are already pro, they don't work. Not all of these uh, patterns obviously make sense. Actually, with the wood one, that is that is quite quite cool. No, you can also flip the orientation. Then we have rows and columns. Now, if how many columns, how many rows would I like to have? Um, again, we can swap out the various types of materials. I can now here specify a plank should be 20 by five inches. So this is just one wooden piece. And then because I have uh, 10 rows and six columns, it creates the texture for me. You see based on the width and the height per unit with the rows and columns, it creates then this 240 by 50 inches. Now you see here inches again, we go back, we measured this out in inches. So this is the reason why it helps to work with inches because now 240, this is 230. So this length is kind of like nearly this length. 
but I want the planks also to go this way. So now it's kind of like 50, when this is 240, now we can put like five times this image. You see also here the tiling, this repetitive elements, it's seamless, but again, if we have many of these, it starts tiling. Okay, I will go back one more time because I wanted to go back to the original piece and I will click import now. There we are, very good. Edit now. Um, oh, interesting, I just kept this uh, edit I had here. So let's close this, there we are. And then I can add this to it. Okay, now there we can see the, the flow. So the <clears throat> wooden planks I would like to rotate. So in group edit, right click texture position, and then I will rotate this to the correct angle and also uh, size. And every craftsperson wants to start at a, you start putting the planks down at one corner and then you walk through the premise. So I decide here in this case, this is the start. So from there, the planks grow and they grow this way. Yeah, now looking from the top, when we do a plan view, we can easily see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is nine times this stuff um, repeats uh, itself quite quickly, specifically when I hide also here all the cabinets. Now, when we have, however, actually something on the floor, you start that this issue can be a little bit mitigated. And then if we go into the space, we look at things even from a different angle. So there are ways to hide it. Now the same issue also with the countertop. If we put something onto it or um, if we put kitchen appliances on it, you can start hiding these issues. Now, uh, for the last part of this exercise, now I would like to show you how we can try to uh, improve this issue. So we can go to Chrome. Now uh, here's, again, architectures.org. Here's the stretcher. I just downloaded it. And then you can go to, if you don't have an access uh, to Adobe Photoshop, you can go to Photopea or use literally any other photo editing program, GIMP for example, or such. Open from computer. Here is the downloaded image. Yep, so this is the sample piece. Now check out what I can do. I go to Canvas size. Again, everything, by the, by the way, what I show you here is standard in every image editing program. I would like to make the canvas bigger. There we are. Um, I would like this to be 2400 for the height. Whoops. Um, hold, on, hold on, actually, one second. Oh, it didn't change the width, it should have. Uh, okay, no problem. Let's undo this one more time. I think 2400 by uh, let's actually say 2000. It doesn't matter because we, we will trim this later. Good. Before we continue, let's go back to here one more time. So we see with 71 inches, and height is 118 inches. Again, now if I go to here, 200, uh, 232, so 7, 14, 21, so three times now. Which means in he here, if we want to do something well, we want to have three pieces next to each other. So this I copy and paste. Now standard control uh, keys, 
copy and paste. There we are. Look at this. Cool. But as you can quickly see, we run into the same issue of, um, yeah, elements here are repeating a little bit bad. Hold on, no? So, and then this is 287. And our sample piece is 118. So two pieces. Um, so 100, 210 is going to be the width, 220, uh, 213 if we want to be precise. And then Kind of like 360. Then now we can just 360 here. This is actually now something where later we can change this down. And we can do this with the trim command. So. so now we have kind of like the width, and there is now we have the length. And what I can do now is um, copy and paste. Where's the thing? There. Copy and paste. You see there we have three pieces. Okay. These two I click and then make a copy and copy. You can also click on elements inside the layer manager to there. So as you can see, I have exactly the same issue as in SketchUp. Now uh, here are my patterns. So this is however representing the wooden floor and now comes what I can do here, what I cannot do in SketchUp. I can, for example, select all those and then I merge this together, merge layer. So it's like one big piece. Okay, now I need to be careful with the gaps. And in real life, all these wooden planks are individual. In uh, nobody's going to pay you to make a custom uh, piece, but our job is only to, to do something that looks remotely believable. So um, I'm going to, for example, select here this segment of my texture with the selection tool that is okay i should however select this a little bit better there copy and paste where is that thing it's somewhere there so and now i can go ahead so i put you to there and copy and paste Where's the thing is there. You see how I'm starting actually breaking up these dark elements that are sticking out. There. Uh, one, two, we can keep. And I just continue this game. So it's a very economically simple and in terms of work, to invest also our complexity easy task. You can continue moving few planks around to break up all these issues. Now, for example, also here, these bright elements. So I fixed one there, I fixed one there. I, I keep a little bit of the bright blipping out there, maybe something here, okay. So, and then once this is done, we are going to export this. This is here, since it's a web interface, save JPEG, quality 95, that's good. This, the scale is actually somewhat okay. Save, there we are, arc stretcher, thank you. And then to SketchUp, we're going to create a new material. I have, uh, yeah, there it is. Thank you. And now I need to specify the width and the height. Again, this is where this comes in very handy. 
So we know 241 plus minus. Oh, 31, 32. There, now we can always adjust these. Thank you. And then we select this and then put this on it. There we are. Change the position there. You can see you know, how big this sample image is. And everything what I showed you here now with a wooden floor pretty much is also the same when, oh, look at this, how perfectly this lines up. Um, what you do with a tile floor, with a brick floor, brick wall, I mean, this is always the same concept. Here now I have two repetitive elements, these two, they stick out, but the rest is actually already much better than, than before. So if I, let's say very quickly, I'll write everything, number one on the group, number two, and there you can see this original, very tiled, this is better. No? Okay, very good. That's really all the magic <clears throat> in how to create um, a material using the architecture add-on inside SketchUp and then also a little bit of pixel image manipulation to create custom textures that instead of being tiled over, let's say here the floor, covers the whole floor. The last piece of advice that however is very important, that's something I would like to bring back one more time. You see, this is how big this image is and you see how big this image is. Look at the file size, 900 kilobytes, nearly three megabyte. Um, images also need to have a certain amount of resolution, more pixels, more details. If um, I take this image and put this into this small framework, it will look very blurry. So if you have a small tileable texture, you can get away with a smaller piece because it can easily repeat, specifically with ceramic tiles. But if you have a wall or a floor that needs to be hand painted, these images need to be decently large, like 2,000, 3,000, 5, 6, 8,000 pixels or so. Because then when we later do a rendering, low resolution images will look blurry. Okay, that's it.